if I asked you now, what have you endured for the witness of Christ? What would you say? But most times we think we have more stature because we are more gifted. It's called a gift because it's a gift. So God doesn't rate men according to gift. That's why no ordination in the scripture is done on the basis of a gift. They are done on the strength of character. They are done on the basis of stamina in God. Those are the true things that the, 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 the heavenly creatures count. What can you stand for God? What can you endure for Jesus? What are the scars that you have sustained on account of this gospel? All of us want to be in the limelight. Do you know why we dishonor fathers in our generation? It's because ourselves don't have any track record. If you have a track record, you'll be careful who you talk to. Many young people my age, they come on Facebook and they are challenging Bishop David Oedeko. Who are you talking to? You can vanish from this generation. There will be no, nobody we know. Everything you have done a thousand times can vanish inside of his own record. Who told you? <laughs> if you are placed on the scale with him, God will choose him and forget you. In kingdom business, not in law for salvation now. In salvation we are all equal, but in the kingdom we are different. Because kingdom is God's business. All your children can be equal by birth. But when it comes to service, your first son who is 30 years old is the one you talk to, not your baby that is three years old. We challenge fathers because we have no track record. If you have track record, you be careful. In 1979, Bishop Oedeko called for three days fast for Nigeria. You started praying for Nigeria in 2015. And then you are talking and talking down on him. You don't know what intercession for Nigeria means. In 1988, Wale trekked around the whole country in three days, praying three, three hours every day in every state of this country for God to visit the country. And then you stand up today because you have preached in Enugu and Newi. You now say, ah, these people don't know what they are saying. <laughs> you are a novice. You are about to fall into the condemnation of the devil. He said, do not exhort a novice. First Timothy 3 verse 7. He said, lest he will be lifted up and fall into the condemnation of the devil. Because you prayed for two sick people, they are healed. He now stand up and say, you know, uh, the way the healing anointing works, when it comes upon me, I can, that's why, that's how I do what I do. Which healing anointing are you talking about? Reverend Chris did his first crusade in 1980. Where were you? Do you know, Jesus? were you born? And if you were born, have you heard the name Jesus Christ? 1980. And then you come, you say, well, uh, it's the anointing. Which anointing are you talking about? Do you know the anointing? Because there's no doctrine of suffering. There's no doctrine of labor. There's no doctrine of track record. We just jump up and we say what we want. We are actually not on fire. Because the character of God has not been formed. When the fire comes through suffering, what it does is that it brings the shape of Christ out of your soul. You can carry a gold, a gold slab, and it will have no value. But when you carry it through the fire, the dross will come out of it. And that gold can become a ring. That gold can become anything, and the value changes. We've not gone through fire, and we've not gone through suffering. That's why we talk without coordination. But a generation must have to repent so that God can entrust to us a heritage for the next generation. Never find yourself in a place where you talk against authority. Never. I don't care if I end here. But I want somebody to hear. You will never go far. The Bible said for this cause many are sick. For this cause many they sleep not discerning the lost body. We are not equal in this body. There are those who came before us. 
and there are those who are handling more responsibility beyond us there must be order there must be honor he said the army of the last day will not break their ranks you can't break ranks in this kingdom and expect to be promoted where will you go to you have violated the structure the cadre of the spiritual how will you be promoted from what to what subject is pruned for more. I'm saying these things because the reason many people remain small, this is it. You spoke against somebody that is an authority in the spirit. And so long as you stand there, you will never grow. Because you have violated the very ladder, ladder of growth in the kingdom. You are doing church ministry and you are talking against those who have been doing church 30 years before you were born. You will go nowhere apply all the principles of church growth it will not work you came to a territory those who are laboring there before you assume they know nothing you are an elite when you labor for a long time the demons in the land will tell you we don't know you this is why we can't have more we narrowed ourselves we reduced our possibility by the things we altered there must be regard for authorities he said, these ones don't have regard for entities. He said, even Michael, the archangel, did not bring railing accusation against Lucifer. He only said, the Lord rebuke you. This is how men grow. Most of us have large and great destinies. But the very custodians of the mantle which we inherit, we have fought them. So the mantle will reject us. Some of us today are supposed to become the next apostles rising from Africa. But we have fought the apostles that rose because we didn't have discernment. We are not pruned. When you go through certain paths in life, it will narrow your utterance. I thought I knew it until I met Apostle Arumi. And I stayed there. And I stayed there. And as I stayed, God kept increasing me. God kept increasing me. I'm not doing anything different from what I was doing. I was even more rugged before than now. My friend knows me. Some years ago now, I don't want to say those days because there are no those days. We are in these days. My friend, we buy Tom Tom for me every day. I had fasted for five years. It looked as if my intestine was decaying. I can't talk calmly like this. The energy will, will overtake me. My nerves will literally want to collapse. My stomach was literally decaying. He took it as a responsibility to be by me sweet. Yet with that intense fasting and prayer, I, go, I went nowhere. Nobody knew me. Until a man looked at me and said, come up here. He said, come up here. Come up here. Come up here. And suddenly, he looked as if we are saying something new or doing something new. It's the same thing we are saying. But process taught us how to regard authority. And by our alignment with authority, we gain promotion. There are so many things we are praying for that doesn't need prayer. You only need to discern who has it and honor that thing and collect it. And some of it is not far away in Sokoto. It's right here in the church. You know, when an evangelist comes, everybody is hungry. They want him to come and scatter everywhere. The guy will scatter everywhere because he's preaching there for the first time. If he preach here for 10 services, nothing will happen again. He will be forced to disciple because God is not scattering everywhere every day. God is raising men. And then when the evangelists go, you assume your pastor doesn't have anything. Follow your pastor when he also goes for a meeting outside. So your solution is lying with you, but you can't receive it. Because you are not pruned. You didn't go through this path, so you don't understand the labor of pastoring. That's why you can talk against one. Do you know what it means to be a servant of a spirit? You are not a servant of a spirit. You don't know the demands the spirit places on that man. Who told you you can say you can talk in that corridor? up and say we are from the same village so you go to challenge the native doctor in your clan you will die that you are from the same village doesn't mean all of you are the servant of that spirit who told you because you are a Christian you are, you are a servant of the Holy Ghost and then you can talk to the you don't know what is happening there keep quiet you will not go nowhere we receive impartations upon impartations upon impartations but we don't wonder why we don't go nowhere the reason is because we have reduced the space for growth. I know many young people.
people that just came into the kingdom and because they learned the right things in two three years god exploded them meanwhile there are other people that are in the kingdom for 20 years they have not gone anywhere and they can't see that the reason they are not promoted is themselves they know everything yet this thing they know is not taking them nowhere and they will not repent we must be pruned for more and the way we are pruned sometimes is when God takes us through circumstances that teaches us how to be humble that teaches us how to be patient that teaches us how to honor and suddenly because you learn honor suddenly because you learn patience your chambers begin to open and the same thing you are doing all of a sudden you do it and something happens you are singing the same song you are singing and somebody hears it and say how come you sang like that and in one day your story changes then you know it doesn't take God anything to shift you you were only the limitation in God's part there are certain things in this kingdom that are stronger than impartations one of it is life in the spirit when you go through tribulations when you go through trials when you go through pain sometimes people come to you and complain what's happening to them you can just see through the problem man of God I don't know why I can't get married this is the third relationship I'm in and most times when they draw close they break up when they draw close they just go you are talking to me in so much arrogance if I was the one even me the man of God that will run for my life so the man of God will tell him thank God for the people that run <laughs> because they would have died in your hand the Bible says it's rather to stay on the rooftop than to share a house with a nagging woman what is happening why are all of them going what is the meaning of this I don't even know I'm tired I'm tired and you came to the man of so most times when you are talking the man of God is looking like this what he's saying in his heart is ah how come you are not aware that you are your problem and then you think the man of God will say we rebuke the spirit of reproach we cast out the demon and the man of God will tell you when else you want to talk be patient don't talk loud then you are now saying ah I came here to be married are you now counseling me that is why you can't be married you are your reproach pruned for more Somebody comes to you and says he's trusting God for promotion. And while the two of you are here talking, he now begins to talk about somebody else who is succeeding. Say, imagine this person. He thinks, he, he thinks there's anything special about him. See the way he's behaving. See the way he's talking. The same promotion you are looking for, you are fighting it in the people that have it. So you burnt the bridge that you should follow. But you didn't learn. This is how we are pruned for more. It's more of a character thing than it's an impartation thing. I don't even know why I'm talking like this. I came here this evening to set this place on fire. Why am I talking like this? 